Uh, what you're viewing is a residential home here in Mesa, Arizona. My name's James Belleville. I'm the owner of Concrete Repairman LLC here in Phoenix, Arizona. The concern, and, and we're going to get to that when we get inside, is why is the interior floor heaving upward and causing all of these cracks, even a broken window? Windows coming out of square. Well, here in Arizona, it hardly ever rains in Arizona, right? My neighbors don't have any rain gutters. Why should I have rain gutters? Well, go find one of your neighbors that has a rain gutter. Go knock on their door and ask them, why do you have rain gutters? They'll tell you all about their interior floor heave cracks. And how this occurs, uh, over the years, and these foundations are the most shallowest foundations in the United States. They're 24 inches from the top of the interior floor elevation to the soil that's holding them up. So when it rains, and if you calculate length times width times depth of all of this rough rainfall, let's just say it rained an inch over a period of 24 hours, and you capture all of that rainfall and you place it near the shallowest foundations in the United States and you build a dam around it to even hold even more in. Here's what's going to happen. This horizontal crack here is the stem wall foundation. It's the top and the block sits on top of it. You should never use patch material to cross a construction joint. And so what happens is the foundation is moving down and separating from the block. The interior walls are supporting the roof trusses. But the foundation wall is moving down, causing this separation along here. Then, it starts to stair-step. Stair-stepping is a sign of settlement. Also a sign of settlement is the horizontal separation of the foundation wall. And another sign are vertical breaks in the foundation. All of these are facts. Then you can go a little bit more, and if we just look, at how much this soil has shrunk and is pulling away from the foundation. I can, I can almost drop my knife in there. So when you fill this dam-like structure up, more goes down deeper. Then the damage starts to increase faster in a shorter period of time. Cracks in soil doesn't mean, oh my God, your home was built on expansive soil, or your home was built on farmland, or number three, your home was the last one built in the neighborhood, and that's where they put all the trash. Those are a lot of the, the well, the top three things I hear all the time, people say. Uh, so what I'm here to do is to show you what I'm looking at. And diagnosing foundation problems correctly based on facts, not hearsay, not being taught in a classroom setting by a professor that says, pupils, here's expansive clay soil. We're going to submerge it in soil over the weekend. We're going to come back Monday and boy, it's as big as a basketball. And then you let it dry out for a week and then it shrinks and cracks all over the place. So when somebody other than me or, or any other foundation contractors or specialists, that sort of thing, when they see this, more than likely is, oh my God, you know, expansive soil. And then if you have floor cracks, you must have a bunch of water underneath your floor causing that expansive soil to heave your floors up. It's not the case at all. Don't believe in that, even though expansive soil is real. 
over here in this corner, then we also have the neighbor roof rainfall coming down and this soil is sloping towards the home and then whatever comes over here is also being dumped in here and the roof rainfall and atmospheric rain. Stair stepping occurs because that's going down. Vertical breaks happen because the foundation can no longer support itself because the soil is wet and can no longer support the vertical pressures being applied down to it by gravity. It's like a 10 pound bowling ball on top of mud. There's another vertical, another vertical, another vertical, another vertical. That's what these look like. Another one. This one just so happens to come right up and start stair stepping and then another one had to break again to relieve even more pressure. So as time goes on, this really starts going quickly. It's not because of expansive soil. It's because you got a bunch of water here saturating the soil that's holding it up. Going inside. Well, before I go inside, we have the stair stepping over here, stair stepping over here. And then in the middle of the house is basically being split right down the middle. So this crack is larger at the top and gets smaller as it goes down. It is in fact doing this. It's moving down. That's a fact. Vertical breaks are a fact. The separation of the grout from the foundation is a fact. Stair stepping is a fact. Soil is shrinking is a fact. Pulling away, adding more moisture to it. The top of the foundation wall is separating. The glass is broke. Now we're going inside. This is the most stable part of the house. This is a heave crack. Not likely caused by expansive soil. I get tired of hearing that. Then here it's more straight. A lot of times keyway joints are installed in the floor when the concrete guys pour the floor. So based on this crack coming along here, this side's moving downward, causing this to lift up and crack and separate. Pretty easy to see that. Don't have to be a rocket scientist. Over here, same thing applies. Somebody has put some floor leveler in there, dabbled around in something they shouldn't have been doing. It looks like crap. This joint is heaved up. It's, I can stick my finger down in there. So as this heaves up, it's going down and splitting. So when you have an interior wall that sits on top of the interior floor, right? Where it meets a perimeter wall setting on top of a perimeter footing. This is what happens. They move differently. It's shearing. This side's moving down. That's stating a fact. It's real. I can see it. This crack is real. It's moving down on this side. This side is slightly higher than this side. So if you put one foot on one side, one foot on the other, and you point to the nearest exterior wall, it's going to point you in the right direction on where to look on the outside. And it continues through this room, all the way through the house. This is the other side of the wall. We have shearing here. We have heave cracks. And then another one coming off this way. You remember that stair step in the wall on the outside? The front of the home is heaving. It's moving downwards, not because of expansive soil. 
because you're adding water and holding it. And it comes through here and it gets a little bit more stable, but this one's really moving and this window's out of skew, it's skewed and broke the window, very likely. Maybe the neighbor kid's got a BB gun, don't know. It sure looks like stress. So what do you do about it? Concrete Repairman has thousand pound floor grinders and handhelds that has dust shrouds encompassing. And that is also attached to industrial vacuums. We're not gonna dust up your house. We grind and profile the cracks down to a better profile. Then, depending on what you put on top of this interior floor, laminate flooring works the best because it's non-rigid material and it kind of floats around on top of the floor. A rigid material like tile, you're going to cross the fault line and when this continues to move, it's going to crack the tile in the same location. So grinding method with tile and then structurally stitching. We structurally stitch this with number four half inch rebar. There's nothing you're gonna put in that crack that's gonna hold your house up. Once it is ground and structurally stitched and it is out of level enough that we need to use a floor leveling system, we use MAPE floor leveling systems for all of our floor leveling. It's a no-brainer product. It has never failed us. Same thing applies here, grinding, structural stitching. And then we have to bring that floor up slightly from the last guy who reinstalled the floor. They put down some floor leveler, but you can tell it was very unskilled work. And they didn't know how to stop or the reason why the crack even appeared to begin with. Grind and stitch, usually bedrooms, there's a tack strip on here, is carpet. So in rooms that doesn't have tile, uh, it has carpet. So grinding is the only thing required and maybe floor leveling just so it has a nice transition. Going into the backyard. Now we're here in the backyard. Now the other half of this roof structure, if you calculate length, width, and depth of one inch of rain, and you capture all of that rainfall, and you force it near the shallowest foundations in the United States, it's gonna move down. And if it moves down, at the weakest part of walls, or doorways, windows, and thresholds, you're going to get this. Stair stepping. It's ripping this house apart at this location and at this location, which are the weakest links in this vertical wall. Doorways, windows, and thresholds. You can see the footing plainly. This is the top of the footing. The block sets on top of the footing. And then these are vertical breaks in the foundation. I only want to see one every 20 feet. If you have more than one within that 20 feet, you need to control the water. And another sign is, oh geez, I can, I can put my hand down there. Uh, this bottom grout line is separated, just like it is in the front yard at the beginning of the video, except it doesn't have any stucco or cementuous material covering it. And this is why you don't go past a construction joint. And this soil, man, that soil is pulled back the width of my hand. Now it's allowing even more to go down deeper. There's water supply right there. Maybe there's a leak. You have to rule all of that out. Rain gutters and dirt grading can save your home from interior floor heave. It's not necessarily expansive soil. You got a bunch of water underneath your floor. You got a water leak. Then come to find out, no, I don't have a water leak. Why is it coming up? 
It's because the outside is moving down. The interior floor is following it. The interior floor has outward pressures. I've heard people sta state, James, the interior floor is considered a floating floor and it's not going to follow the foundation down like your garage with expansion around it. It has outward pressures and it does follow it down and it also can slip all the above and everything in between. This is straightforward, very simple. My name's James Belleville. This concludes this video of this home in Mesa, Arizona. For more information, you can go to our website, ConcreteRepairman.com, or visit our YouTube channel at Concrete Repairman LLC. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.